lovelies, I hope you're all well. So today we're going to make a 4th of July project. Now I know that I'm obviously not American, but I do have a lot of American followers and I enjoy my time in the States. I go to the States a lot and it's a country that I absolutely love. So I thought we'd do something a little bit nice to celebrate 4th of July. Something that you guys can copy if you want to. We are going to be doing a maker project today because we are using the knife blade. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to images and we're just going to type in America and we're going to pick the American flag. So we're going to insert images. So we're going to be using the knife blade and Cricut chipboard today. We will also use some balsa wood as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually change the width of my flag and I'm going to change it to 10.5 inches and press enter. Now my white stripes and my red stripes I'm going to do in chipboard. And my blue cutout stars, I'm actually going to do in either vinyl or iron-on. I'm not quite sure yet. Now, the reason I'm not doing those in chipboard is I've actually already tried to cut them using balsa wood 332, which actually takes less passes than chipboard. The balsa 332 is seven passes, and the chipboard, I think, is about 20 passes. Well, to do the stars on the balsa took me over four hours. Yep, you heard right, four hours. And then it completely disintegrated on the mat anyway because it was too small. The stars were just too small and the whole thing just fell apart. Four hours, which I will talk about in a follow-up video, which will be all about the pros and cons of the knife blade. But today we're going to look at actually creating this. So as I say, our stars are going to be either vinyl or iron-on, and our stripes are going to be chipboard, and then we're going to have some text, which we're going to do in balsa wood. So the first thing I want to do is actually ungroup these. I'm then going to hide my blue stars. I'm going to highlight all and I'm going to slice and I'm then going to remove this middle red layer. I'm just going to delete that. So I'm then going to have my red stripe separate and my white stripe separate. So I've got my text and I've done it in Samantha. So the first thing I want to do is actually change the style. So I'm going to change it from regular to bold. And we're then going to go to advanced and ungroup to letters. And we can then move our letters so that they all overlap. Once I'm happy with them, I'm going to highlight all and I'm going to go to weld. We're then going to go to make it. And you'll see we've got our format. So we're going to go to continue. So mat 1 and mat 4, we're going to set to the Cricut chipboard. We are actually using the Cricut chipboard today. So we're going to go to Browse All Materials. We're going to go to Artboard and we're going to go to Heavy Chipboard. Now Cricut have been very clear that if you're going to use chipboard, you're going to use Heavy Chipboard, you should only use their brand of chipboard. So I am using the Cricut chipboard today. I have used other chipboard as well but as I say Cricut are very very clear that they only recommend using their chipboard you are able to get this if you're in the UK from crafts you love they have got it in stock and I will link to it below we can then go and get our knife blade ready and we're going to go and set up our mat so as always when working with wood or chipboard or anything to do with your knife blade we are going to use a purple mat and you also want to make sure that you use masking tape to tape around the entirety of your board. So I've already got my knife blade in my machine and the other thing is I've made sure that my star rollers are moved all the way across to the right hand side. You do want to make sure you do this because otherwise they are going to mark your material. <laughs> Two of 
have 20 passes. We've got 23 minutes remaining, which actually isn't... That's not too bad. It's certainly not as bad as the stars trying to cut those out in wood. So it's on 15 of 20 passes, and I can actually see that it is lifting. Now, it's lifting off the actual map, which is a problem, because what we don't want is it to lift off the map and clog our machine and for it to damage our machine. So I'm going to be very, very clear now. If you are cutting with your knife blade, do not leave your machine please 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 don't leave your machine because if you have got bits that are starting to come up even though other bits may not be completely cut which has happened you do not want them to come off the mat and get clogged in your machine and to damage your machine so you do need to stay in the machine vicinity so that you can keep checking on it as I say, I've got bits coming up. I don't know if the whole thing is cut, but I don't want the other bits popping out. So I'm now going to pause the machine. So I've paused the machine, and as I say, I can see little bits starting. Yeah, I mean, that's completely cut there. So we're just going to try this bit here. Yeah. So they're completely cut, so we're actually going to eject it from the machine early now. So I'm going to come in and remove my masking tape. Now the other thing I want to talk about is with the masking tape, yes it's obviously stuck down, but unless you're using really sticky masking tape, this is just a kind of medium stick tape, it actually starts peeling up and it's getting stuck under the machine a little bit. Now I'm here, I'm watching it, so I'm able to pause it and kind of work out which pieces of tape I need to remove. You can see I've already removed some of this top portion here. This is why you want to stay with the machine. See we've got a little bit of a pull up here, so there is a little bit of damage there, but the rest of it has cut beautifully and actually that's not part of a design anyway so our actual design area has cut really really lovely so we're going to get the next chipboard piece ready to cut out the red parts of our stripes so we're on 14 of 20 passes and again I can see that it is lifting so I'm just going to pause the machine and we're going to eject the whole thing. So you can see that they are just popping out, they've cut beautifully. I really do like the Cricut chipboard, I think it's really nice and lovely to work with. So I'm actually going to go and paint these red and my previous stripes I'm going to go paint white. Next we're going to do our text, so we're going to go to browse all materials, we're going to go all the way down to wood, and we're choosing balsa 332, and then we're going to go and set everything up exactly the same way as we do before. I just want to say that I have gone in and I've just manoeuvred my text so it's slightly across now if you are going to do that you obviously want to make sure that it doesn't go over the 11 inch mark and you also want to make sure that your actual mat is the same as your computer mat so i've got my mat all ready to go with my balsa 332 so i'm just going to place it in second of seven passes and it's 16 minutes remaining which again isn't too bad we can kind of live with that so that's really really good so it's completed it's seven passes so it's telling us to go and check our cut so I'm just going to come in with my weeding tool and I'm just going to gently lift up the middle pieces and this will give you a good indication and I can see that that is fully cut so we're going to unload the mat so we're then just going to very gently start pushing through and I can see that I've got a 
few areas that haven't quite cut. So I'm just going to go in with my craft knife and just give them a little bit of a helping hand. So I needed a little bit of help, just a little bit of finishing off with our craft knife. The problem is if you go in with another cut, you kind of risk ruining pieces that are already cut and you know it's not an exact science so you are going to have to work with it a little bit. I wouldn't cut from the back, I would just follow the lines through and at this point it only needed a few little areas that were just hanging on by a few wooden threads so it is worth kind of finishing it off just with your craft knife just to kind of make it a little bit easier. So you can see that I've painted my chipboard white and red and then I've just glued all my pieces together just using some wood glue. I've then got my vinyl which I've cut out so I'm just going to transfer it onto my flag the way that I normally would. And then with my cutout text I've just added some satin outdoor varnish, just a clear varnish. I haven't done anything else to it, I just wanted to coat it to give it a nice finish.